Hi, welcome back to the vlog. That's what it looks like outside my window. This is my bathroom door. It's got a gold handle. This is my toilet. It's very nice. This is one of the gifts I got for Christmas. It's a um, bench for men. Shower gel. And you can feel full of life by applying to the hands and lathering over your body. So that's quite good. So the first product I'm going to use today is the Oral-B toothbrush. It's really good for cleaning your teeth. And I've also got the Sensodyne Pro Enamel. It's got gentle whitening, as you can see. My teeth are not white, but it helps restore whiteness apparently, so I keep using it. So what I'm going to do is just run the toothbrush gently under the tap and I'm then going to take some of the Sensodyne Pro Enamel and I'm just going to gently apply that just the top of the toothbrush so you only want to get it on the part that's got the bristles on the brush, preferably nowhere else um, on the brush and again we're just going to give that another little rinse under the tap I'm going to position the mirror so that I can see myself in the mirror while I'm brushing my teeth but what I might even do today guys is I might even just use the viewfinder above the camera here so that's what I'm going to do so you're now going to see me in action as I uh, gently whiten and clean my teeth So that's pretty much that. As you can see, I've got some residual toothpaste just on the mouth. Um, what I'm going to do is use the tap to just run my mouth underneath that, like so. So as you can see, in the space of around 45 seconds, my teeth have been... They're just the same. Um, but. You should keep doing that every day, um, preferably twice a day if you if you have the, the time. And yeah, yeah, that's the first part of my day. Hey guys, I'm back. I've put a t-shirt on. I'm feeling good. Really, really pleased with how the how the tooth brushing went earlier. I think it's went well. Um, so we're going to move to the next stage of my get ready, and that is to apply some product to this this hair. This beautiful kind of. I don't even know what colour the hair is, but it's it's lovely. I don't think you can deny that it's it's a good it's a good head of hair. So it's actually a two stage procedure that that I tend to use for my hair. For anyone watching this who's going to copy this, you can buy the products, but it may not end up with the same results. It's just it's it's an art. You can try, but we'll see how it goes. I'll show you anyway. Yeah. Okay. So first of all. I've got the Schwarzkopf Got To Be Powder It's Volumising Styling Powder and it's uh, it's good Yeah, it's just, just like powder you put in your head Makes it look like it's snowing which is probably the best bit You sometimes get it on your on your t-shirt but then if you just give yourself a, a wipe it will come off Or if you want to have that kind of like I've got dandruff look, then you can you can leave it on your shoulder and just walk about with it and I'll just make you look like you've you've got some natural dandruff. Here we go, I'm just gonna apply this just all over the top of the head with particular attention paid to the front because this is the bit I want to make stick up. The good thing about this product as well is if you don't properly wash your hair, it just stays in, so the less you wash the better. Um, and it'll save you some money, and you won't have to buy as much or use as much. So I just gently style that. As you can see, you've got a big quiff at the front. It's probably too big. I think I need a haircut and just a bit of a bit of gentle volume at the back there. I'm going to move on now. The next thing I've got is the VO5 Matte Clay. 
So, yeah, this stuff is like cement for your head, but I mean, it holds it in place, so who am I to ask? So, I'm just going to take, I don't know, a fingertip's worth. I think that's enough. Rub it onto my hand, give it a good... That's probably not enough, because I can't really see that. That's more like a hand cream. So I'll put a wee bit more on. And we'll just go for it. You need to run your hands all the way through your hair. Because if you just apply it to the top, then it's only going to be on the top. And that right there, guys, that's that's the kind of result I was talking about. Like, as you can see, that is... As far as, as, far as a head of hair goes, that is more or less... The pinnacle. So yeah. So if you've ever watched a Get Ready With Me video with, with Jade, um, or any makeup artist, it usually takes about 40 minutes to an hour for the video, plus there's bits edited out. I just get ready in two minutes. So, so yeah, that's my two stage procedure for looking fine. Um, I'm looking fine now, so my confidence levels have just went from here to here, just above where my, where my hair is. I'm now going to sit down the stairs and just basically procrastinate about whether to, to go to the gym or not. So I'll probably wait about an hour and 45 minutes doing next to nothing to eventually then go to the gym and it'll just take a couple of hours longer than it's than, than it's meant to. This is my usual protocol uh, for going to the gym. Just before I sit down and procrastinate I just wanted to show you just the final part I forgot to mention and obviously that is that I need to, to smell good. You always want to smell good, so what I'm going to do is just apply some aftershave and I'll show you how I do that. We're going to go in with the Victoria's Secret Very Sexy Platinum. It's made from Sichuan pepper, oak moss and violet leaves. Probably my, my three favourite things. I was just really lucky that, that those happened to be in the, in the, in the one aftershave, so I, I couldn't believe it. When I found it, so many people come up to me, hey, Andrew, Andrew, what, what do you, what aftershave do you wear? You, you smell amazing. I just say, yeah, it's Victoria's Secret. And the, the face that I usually get from them is, Victoria's Secret don't make aftershave, Andrew. Yeah, they do, they do, and, and I wear it, and I smell good. But that's what I say to them, so. What I do is, sorry, just what, what I do is I'll, I'll take the take the top off, so I'm just gonna, just gonna gently lift, just gonna gently lift the top off. There, and just place that to the side. I'm going to take the bottle, usually apply to three or four distinct areas in the front of the neck. So here, 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 and here. And I'll just go back around and do that again, so almost in reverse order. I'll then hit a couple of spots in the back of the neck. And finally I'll just spray a bit on my clothes as well, because no one wants to smell like comfort washing powder, so. And, and that's really it. That's all there is to it. It's quite a simple procedure if you if you follow the action step by step. I'm just going to go and procrastinate by going to the gym now. I did about an hour and a half's worth of procrastinating there. So yeah, I was pretty happy with that. I'm just going to head to the gym now and just to kind of talk you through my plan. So I've actually packed an extra t-shirt with me. So the plan is that I will go on the treadmill first, I'll do a bit of running on the treadmill and then I'll move on to some weights after that. So I'll bring an extra t-shirt so that once I come off the treadmill and I'm all sweaty and stuff, it means that I can change into my new t-shirt which has no sweat on it so that people don't think that I'm too unfit. And they'll think, oh he's just in a run on the treadmill and he's not even sweating, oh he must be really really, really fit. So that's what, that's what the plan behind that, the thinking behind that. It also means if I go on the treadmill first before I do the weights, if I can't complete a set and I drop the weights, then I can say, oh, I've just I've just went for a run, so I'm pretty tired. And people will be like, yeah, yeah, of course, of course, and they'll understand, so that's the thinking behind it. So it's a win-win um, situation. Um, I'll also be sure to Snapchat um, and Facebook and Instagram and tweet everybody just to let them know that I am going to the gym. So I'll do that on arrival as soon as I get, um, as soon as I get in. Catch you soon. Just arrived at the gym. I uh, just forgot to say that um, I will make sure that I take in my my shaker. You know these shakers where I can keep my, my protein shake in it. Um, I'll just make sure that I, I, I'm constantly kind of walking about the gym. Not drinking too much from it, but always kind of shaking it. Just like that. Just so that I let everyone know uh, that I am someone who goes to the gym a lot. So yeah, I'll make sure to do that quite a lot. Yeah, I'll catch you in the gym. 
just finish my run. First thing I'm going to point out is the hair is, I mean, I mean, other than the sweat on my forehead, you wouldn't think I've, I've been running. So big shout out to um, to Feel Five and Schwarzkopf for sponsoring this this uh, this vlog. Without you guys, it, it wouldn't happen. Like I said before, I did bring uh, an additional top with me, and there it is. It's a it's a long sleeve under on my top. The best thing about it probably is that it hugs me where I need hugged, so it makes me look pretty hench, even though I'm not. Uh, swole is the goal, size is the prize, so that's what I'm looking for in this top and it, and it seems to achieve that. So I'm just going to get changed into the top and I'll catch you in a bit. Yeah, that's me changed. Uh, as, as you can see, I wiped a bit of sweat from my brow, so you can't really see that I've done a, I've done a run. I'm going to walk back in that gym and people are going to think, well, I'm, I'm sure I just saw him run really fast, but now he's, he, he looks really fresh. He must be really fit, so that's what hopefully going to happen when I walk back in. Just a wee note about the top, as you can see it's got a, a zip here, so if I'm really feeling quite cold, then just zip that up the top, it, it keeps a bit of heat in. Then again, if I'm feeling really warm, or if I want to look like, a, like I'm a bit older, yeah, this is more of a dad thing to do, then I'll just do this. There you go, father of two, detached house in the suburbs. It's got a variety of looks um, with this top. I'm probably going to go with in a mid zip, it's probably right for about someone my age. Just a quick note guys, I know you've noticed that I'm not actually in a, a changing room, I'm, I'm in a, more of an office. I actually work here, I don't just get changed in random offices. But yeah, I'm a, a gym instructor, so I'm going to just show you a couple of my favourite exercises in the gym. I hit some good numbers in the treadmill there, hopefully follow that up with some, some good numbers in the gym. Let's see how it goes. my session finished, that's just a, a snapshot of the sort of things that I would typically do in the gym in a session. As you can tell I'm pretty experienced when it comes to using the gym and, and like I said I'm a, a top class gym instructor so if anyone needs a program made up, if you like what you saw in the in the compilation there, just give me a shout and I can, I can make a program for you. Don't even need to know anything about you, don't need to have seen you training before, I'll just make one up for you on the spot and I'll make you fitter stronger, leaner, in the space of less than a week, so just give me a shout. Back home, going to get some lunch, it's quite late, kind of wish I ate earlier, but it's okay, it's okay, we'll go for it. My dad, oh my god, my dad, what a legend. He's left out some tomato and lettuce, he's left out a tray and some tongs, and there's some bacon in the fridge, so I will be having BLTs for lunch. Can't wait. Welcome to Cooking with Andrew. We're going to cook bacon, lettuce and tomato on toasted sandwich. We're going to start off with some Danish smoked back bacon. If it's not from Denmark, I'm not interested. I'm just cutting off the fat at the back of the bacon. So it looks like that. Jade started doing it because she's on Slimming World and it just became a habit. But I'll leave the fat on at the bottom. You need a, a little bit of uh, guilt free bacon. So I'm just going to pop the, the grill on to full heat. I'm going to use this bad boy here and put some tin foil at the bottom. Pop the tray back on, 
pop the tray in the oven. I'm going to allow that just to heat up in the oven. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I quite like when you put the bacon on the hot tray and it goes Also, just for a bit of added protein, pint of milk. You can never have enough protein. Okay, coffee. I know I've been like kidding on up until now, but I genuinely do drink only decaf coffee now. Because basically, I read a blog from somebody who said that once they changed from regular coffee to decaf coffee and they stopped taking caffeine in full stop, they basically stopped getting that kind of midday lull that you get when it's like two or three o'clock and you're just like. So basically, yeah, I just drink decaf now and it, what I've found is as long as I get enough sleep, there is no real midday lull, I just usually feel fine. In general, I feel a, a bit better. And on the odd occasion where I have drank caffeine, maybe like once, twice in the last eight months, I'm like... So, yeah, back to the vlog. I think the oven's ready, just going to pop the bacon on now. Listen to that. So just kind of some of the secrets about making bacon. Um, first of all, you don't want fully pink bacon. No one likes that, it doesn't matter if you pretend. No one really likes pink bacon and if you do, then... What's important, bacon is usually the first turn, it's quite an important part, probably vital in terms of getting your bacon right. So just about to perform the first turn just now. Um, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to grab my oven gloves, these are brand new oven gloves. Don't open the oven too fast and put your face right in front of the oven, there could be some smoke uh, coming out of it. Now just a disclaimer as well, this oven does need you to keep the door closed when you have the grill on, unlike other ovens. I know most people say, oh, when you keep the, the oven door closed, you, you, you have carbon monoxide build up. No, no, it's 2018. It's not anymore. So, um, yeah, it's going to open the oven door up. A wee bit of smoke coming out there, uh, as you can see. I'm going to be a bit steamy. Yeah, just give it a wipe there. Ah, how are we doing? We're back in the room. So, the first turn. Yeah, first turn is really important. So I'm just going to grab the tray with my oven glove and just pop it down. You can see about the fat there bubbling up. So you can see there we've got pink bacon. Now I have known people in the past that would accept this as a meal. Unacceptable in my book. So I'm just going to just look how I gently flip that there. It's just a gentle but brisk turning of the bacon. Now the longer you spend with this then the less time your bacon's cooking for. So it's important we get this out of the way quickly. It's a quick exchange and you're up. And we're back. And the oven's shut and we're away again. And, the, and, the, and the, the other side of the bacon can cook. So as we've seen previously, the tomato and lettuce are already cut up. I've got some full fat mayonnaise. Get those calories in, get the gains. And I've also got, over here, three slices of wholemeal bread. Just cooking away there nicely in the toaster. Again, toasting breads, uh, I think it's an underrated art. 
Many people just think it's all about putting the toast in the toaster. The toaster pops it up at a given time and that's it, the toast is ready. That's, it's not as simple as that. If you want the perfect toast, then you're going to have to, to work a bit harder than that. I think for most of us we would agree that once you've had a toaster for long enough, it doesn't work quite the same as it did in day one. You maybe have one side that cooks it a bit better than the other. Um, so maybe one side of your toast comes out looking a bit, a bit raw. Raw toast. Raw toast. Yeah, so on the other side might look to a, a bit um, nice and crispy, perfect. So there's an art to maybe stopping it a bit early. This is what I do. I consider myself a toast artist. I withdraw the toast slightly early, flip it around, identify where are the good areas of the toaster and where are the bad areas of the toaster. Whichever part of the bread has been in a bad area of the toaster, I make sure that now has a good area of the toaster to work from and can then just uh, toast away nicely. So what I'll do is I'll show you that, that changeover process and I'll, and I'll demonstrate how that works. What I'm going to do is just release this side of the toast here. Up we come. So this side looks a bit underdone. Perfect on that side, so I'm now going to flip that. And I'm also going to flip the other bits of toast as well. Just pop them back in. Boom. Perfect toast. Toast is ready. Just get some mayo on there. Don't hold back. A bit of tomato. Bacon, probably a bit overdone. But hey, no one's perfect. Just pop some lettuce on there. Perfect. Some bacon. And there you have it, the perfect BLT. Just wanted to make a quick note about Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day has just been and gone. I was really pleased with my performance this year. I think any partner could probably learn from what I've done this year. Basically, I was short on time. My own fault, but I left it far too late. And I was panicking about it. I left work. On, on Wednesday night, on Valentine's night, and thought, oh no, what am I going to do? What am I going to get her? So I jumped into Tesco in the Valentine's aisle, which was pretty empty by this point. I found this Bayless and Harding Limited Edition Rose Prosecco Fizz Fragrance Bath Bubbles. Winner every time. So I got that as a kind of base gift. Then what I did was I got a bit more creative, so I thought, right, well, did I get her a DVD? She's seen all these films, what's the point? And then I thought, this is a Tesco Extra. They've got a home section. They also have somewhere you can print off your own photos. So what did I do? I bought a photo frame, took my phone out, plugged it in, got a nice photo of the two of us. Boom. There's your result there. So that doesn't need to be necessarily a, a photo of your engagement party. You may not be engaged. It could be any nice photo. It's guaranteed to be a winner. So yeah, I was pretty happy with myself after that. Yeah, if any if any of you guys or girls are struggling to think about what to get your partner, just follow my lead. I would consider myself a professional at getting a, a late gift. I am currently editing. And it is just after 7 o'clock, so I think Jade has possibly just finished work. So I'm going to try to give her a phone and see how she reacts to the news of me putting a video on her channel. So I'm going to pretend that I've already put the video up, just to see what she would say. Because um, I don't think she'd be too happy, but we'll see how it goes. Sorry, but the person you've called is not available. Please leave your message after the tone. She's phoning me. She's phoning me. Hello? Hello, Ray. Hi, how are you? Fine, how are you? Yeah, fine. I am um, listen, I've got a question to ask. Well, okay. it's not really a question, I've just got something to tell you. Um I've uploaded a video on your 
YouTube. I've, I, I record, I took a camera today, I saw it lying in the house and I recorded some stuff and I put it on YouTube, is that okay? No. I think you'll like it. Is it on my channel? Yeah. Right, okay, bye. Okay, bye. Okay, she wasn't that pleased. But it's okay, it's fine. Eventually Jade said yes to the video, so here it is. I hope you've enjoyed finding out how wonderful my life is. It truly is amazing. If you've got any other ideas for videos, if you want to see more of me, comment below. Please subscribe, give it a thumbs up, or a thumbs down, and an honest review. Any constructive criticism, any feedback. Anyway, uh, thanks very much for watching, guys. Cheerio, bye.